You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamad Shaban. Good evening. In compliance with the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, the Bahrain Defense Force is participating in the humanitarian relief mission Sawa'id Al Ghaith in the Brotherly Republic of Turkey, represented by a search and rescue team from the Royal Guard under the supervision of Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the National Security Advisor and Commander of the Royal Guard. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was at the forefront of those who bid farewell to the search and rescue team upon their departure to Turkey in the presence of the Royal Guard's special. Force Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Salam alaikum, Mr. Jab. We are today in this evening that we will meet with one of the men who have been with us. We have to know this thing. The service with you and the command for this unit and our unit with some of us that we built in the fight. وفي الحرب وما في شك ولا عندي ذرة شك بنوعكم وبسواعدكم أنكم أنتم خير عون وبإذن الله منصورين وبإذن الله راح ترفعون على مملكة البحرين كما عودتونا إحنا اليوم انخلقنا لهذه المحن وانخلقنا لهذه الأنواع من الامتحانات ولله الحمد إن حطينا في هذه الامتحانات والله قدرنا وظهرنا منها منصورين فاليوم لا غرابة عليكم أنتوا اليوم مهمتكم مختلفة تماما المهمة واضحة سلمت إلى قادتكم ووصلتكم لكن التذكير أنتوا اليوم ساعد من هذه السواعد اللي تقوم بالمساعدة والبحث والإنقاذ فإن شاء الله أنكم أنتم خير من يروح لإخواننا المحتاجين للقيام بهذه المهمة في أتم وجه راح نتابع معاكم وراح نباشر كل التعليمات وراح نزودكم بكل اللوجستيات اللي أنتم بتحتاجونها لكن قبل ما أنهي كلامي أوصل لكم تحيات سيدي صاحب الجلالة قائد الأعلى للقوات المسلحة يوصل لكم تحياته كأبناء له كأبناء هذه المؤسسة اللي أنشأها وتعب عليها إلى أن وصلت هذه الثمرة اللي غرسها من ذاك الوقت ولا شك نشكر سيدي سمو ولي العهد نائب القائد الأعلى على تسهيل كل الإجراءات ونشكر طبعا إتاحة هذه الفرصة لنا كحرس ملكي وخدمات طبية ولوجستية بإتمام هذه المهمة من قبل سيدي معالي القائد العام فيا شباب لا وصيكم على مملكة البحرين أولا وقوموا بالمهمة في أتم وجه وعودونا على اللي احنا متعودين عليه وإحنا ثقتنا في قادتكم وثقة قادتكم من ثقة القادة اللي هم يرؤسونهم مباشرة هذه كلها تجي من ثقة سيدي جلالة الملك في أبنائه لا أطيل عليكم كل اللي أبي أشوفكم تسوونه هو عملكم اليومي تعطون أمية بالأمية من جهدكم والله يوفقكم ساعدوا أخوانكم وخواتكم قوموا بالواجب وانقذوا قد ما تقدرون من أرواح وساعدوا وشيلوا سمينا هذه المهمة سواعد القيث وتستمر هذه المهمة إلى أن إن شاء الله نصفي هذا العكر اللي حاصل في تركيا والله تقبل شهداء سوريا وتركيا وما يريهم أي مكروه بإذن الله مشكورين مرة ثانية أشكركم قبل لا تروحوا وراح أشكركم عقب ما تنهون هذه المهمة إن شاء الله وإن شاء الله انكم انتم خير من يمثلنا نفتخر بكم ومره اخرى هذا اكبر فخر لي اني اكون معاكم وقائد لهذه الوحده ولهذا الصفوه من الرجال الكلام ما ينتهي اذا انا بتب تخلوني اوصف لكم لكن واصلوا وان شاء الله نحن نكون معاكم ونلبي كل احتياجاتكم باذن الله موفقين يا رجال 
His Highness Sheikh Nasser highlighted His Majesty the King's constant keenness on launching humanitarian initiatives to help and provide relief to the afflicted and needy people in various parts of the world. He also referred to the support of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister, as well as the BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that the Noble Relief Mission aims to extend a helping hand to those affected by the earthquake based on the humanitarian ties that bring together various people of the world, noting that the search and rescue team is fully prepared and ready to participate in the search and rescue efforts as well as stand by those impacted in order to mitigate the effects of the devastating earthquakes that caused huge losses in lives and property. His Highness the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander wished the team which left the Kingdom of Bahrain on board the Royal Bahraini Air Force aircraft every success in carrying out their noble humanitarian mission to the fullest, praising the high morale of the BDF officers and personnel thanks to the constant care of His Majesty the King, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces. The search and rescue team was also seen off by the Turkish Ambassador to Bahrain, Isin Kakil, Deputy Commander of the Royal Guard, Major General Hamad Khalifa Naimi, Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid, CEO of the National Committee for Supporting Earthquake Victims in Turkey and Syria, and a number of senior BDF officers. The Royal Guard's Search and Rescue Task Force arrived early today at Gaziantep Airport in the southeastern region of Turkey to participate in the humanitarian relief mission and start Sawa'id al ghaith operation. The task force started its mission from Atay province, south of Turkey, which is considered one of the most affected areas by the earthquake, which rocked Turkey and Syria. The Search and Rescue Team of the Royal Guard of Bahrain Defense Force is fully prepared to participate in the search and rescue efforts to find survivors as well as pull out victims and injured people from under the rubble and the affected areas to alleviate the impact of the devastating earthquake that caused heavy losses in lives and properties. In the presence of the chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Vice President of the Supreme Council for the Environment and Deputy Chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club organized the 20th race meeting of the season yesterday. The race was held for the cup of His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, his son's cup, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the Bahrain Gas Company Benegas Cup, Al Bilad Newspaper Cup, and the Horse Affairs Authority Cup. The event was held at the club's racetrack in the Rafa Sakhir. The race was also attended by a number of their highnesses, representatives of the sponsors of the race, and an audience of equestrian and horse racing enthusiasts. The winners were crowned with racing cups as His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa presented his cup to the winning owner, Abdullah Ahmed Al Isa, while His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa presented his cup to His Highness Sheikh Sultan al Din bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa. The chairman of the board of directors of the Horse Affairs Authority Sheikh Adaij bin Salman Al Khalifa presented the Authorities Cup to His Highness Sheikh Sultan al Din bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa, while the Director of Human Resources and Administrative Services at Benegaz, Jamal Al Bu'ainain, presented the Benegaz Cup for the fourth round to His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Ali bin Isa Al Khalifa, and the Benegaz Cup for the fifth round to His Highness Sheikh Sultan al Din bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa. Al Bilad newspaper CEO Ahmed Al Bahar presented the Al Bilad Cup for the second round to the winning owner, Jasim Mohammed Asad, and editor in chief of Al Bilad newspaper. Paper Mu'nis Al Mardi presented the Al Bilad Cup for the third round to the winning owner Hussein Ibrahim Al Afu. This race included eight rounds.
Labor Minister Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan has stressed the need to invest in Bahrain's natural human resources. He also highlighted the importance of solidarity among various relevant authorities. And employing Bahraini youth is a joint social responsibility as it contributes to higher employment rates and the enhancement of social security. The minister made the statements while visiting the Bahrain Commercial Facilities Company, Bahrain Credit, which is part of a series of visits to companies and institutions that support the ministry's initiatives and programs in the field of employing national competencies, especially the National Employment Program within the Economic Recovery Plan, whose priorities include creating promising job opportunities and making citizens the first choice in the labor market. He also met a number of Bahrainis working in the company and listened to their professional success stories, career advancements, and access to senior positions in the company, stressing the importance of highlighting these role models, which proved themselves as examples to be emulated by Bahraini youth. The Minister of Oil and Environment, a special envoy for climate affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak bin Dayna, met with the chairman of the second GDA International Downstream Conference and Exhibition, engineer Sleiman al barqan and his accompanying delegation. They discussed a number of organizational issues related to the event which will be held under the patronage of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, from February the 13th to the 15th at Exhibition World Bahrain in Sakhir. The Minister of Works, Ibrahim bin Hassan al Hawaj, paid an inspection visit to the work site of the sewage network construction project in Block 424 in Jidhafs in order to see the latest development in the progress of the project's work. The Minister affirmed that the Ministry is working to develop the infrastructure in a way that enhances the urban development movement by providing integrated infrastructure in a way that contributes to achieving development goals and expanding the circle of beneficiaries of sanitation services as part of the government's strategy to provide a healthy and safe environment. The Minister was briefed on the progress of projects work which will serve 138 beneficiaries as the construction work is proceeding according to the specified timetable and the completion rate has reached 33 percent of the construction work and it is scheduled to be completed by the end of the third quarter of this year. Social Development Minister Osama bin Ahmed Khalaf al Asfur received heads and board members of a number of social society institutions and discussed cooperation. During the meeting, he stressed the ministry's support to the efforts made by charity societies, praising their key role in serving citizens. He also pledged to facilitate the work of charity societies in line with laws and regulations. The Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Naimi, received today the heads of Gulf Press Societies on the occasion of their visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain. The, during the meeting, the Minister of Information praised their efforts and contributions in supporting and developing Gulf journalistic work. He stressed that such coordination meetings, which the Kingdom of Bahrain regularly hosts for the head of Gulf Press Associations, reflect the vision of the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, in supporting all joint efforts aimed at unifying Gulf media. The Minister of Information affirmed the Ministry's keenness to support the Gulf Press Union to carry out its its well-known journalistic role and to develop its work mechanisms in a way that contributes to strengthening the historical brotherly relations between the GCC states wishing everyone success. Meanwhile, the meeting of the heads of the Gulf Associations was held in the Kingdom of Bahrain in the presence of the chairman of the Saudi Journalistic Association, Khalid al-Malik, president of the Bahrain Journalist Association, Mr. Isa al-Shaiji, the chairman of the UAE Journalist Association, Mr. Mohammed al-Hamadi, the chairman of Kuwaiti Journalist Association, Adnan al-Rashid, chairman of Amani Journalist Association, Dr. Mohammed Al Aremi, to discuss a number of issues of common interest related to developing the work of the Gulf Press Union. During the meeting, proposals to amend the statute of the Gulf Press Union were studied, and a number of future amendments and procedures were agreed upon that contribute to developing the work of the union and strengthening its role and active presence at the regional and international levels. They appreciated the efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain in supporting the Gulf Press work and its active contributions to the development of the work of the union, praising Bahrain for hosting the headquarters of the Gulf Press Union and the good efforts it has made in this field since the founding of the union in 2005, in a way that achieved the common aspirations of the press body in the GCC countries. The National Action Charter affirmed in its eighth clause of Chapter 1 the state's guarantee of educational and cultural services for citizens in addition to compulsory free education in the early stages in order to advance education in the Kingdom of Bahrain and achieve the visions and aspirations of His Majesty the King and the people of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Kingdom of Bahrain is reaping the fruits of His Majesty's pioneering project through many achievements in the educational field, the outputs of which have been optimized for a brighter future for the Kingdom of Bahrain. The upgrading of the educational system 
system and its outputs and the development of educational life in the Kingdom of Bahrain is evidenced by the spread and upgrading of educational facilities in accordance with many international standards, which the Kingdom of Bahrain has been keen to achieve considering education as a cornerstone of developed societies. Therefore, the first chapter of the National Action Charter came in its eighth article, emphasizing the state's sponsorship of sciences, literature and the arts, and its guarantee of educational, cultural and compulsory education services free of charge in the early stages indicated by the law. The National Action Charter also established the stages of achievement that the Kingdom of Bahrain is experiencing today and laid the first building blocks for the consolidation of the state of institutions and the law. In addition, the National Action Charter created a strong structure in supporting many sectors, including the youth sector, as it formed a solid base for youth and sports work, the fruits of which we are still reaping today. The National Action Charter has put Bahrain on the path of comprehensive development in all fields, including the youth and sports movement, which enjoys His Majesty the King's constant follow-up and support. The endorsement of the National Action Charter was of utmost importance to the youth and sports movement in the kingdom as NAC paved the way for the development of national teams and clubs increasing their participation in many regional, Asian and international gatherings where they raised the national banners, achieved distinguished accomplishments and reached podiums. The youth and sports sector has made a quantum leap in the kingdom through the establishment of numerous sports facilities citing the Bahrain International Circuit, the Isa Town Sports Hall, the Khalifa Sports City, in addition to stadiums and youth centers. Now, based on the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Education Ministry has decided to postpone the ceremony that was to be held at the National Action Charter Monument, marking the National Action Charter anniversary. The move is in solidarity with the brotherly Syrian and Turkish people in light of the conditions they are going through as a result of the deadly earthquake that struck parts of their countries. It is also in support of the ongoing rescue and relief efforts in which a task force from the Bahrain Defense Force Royal Guard is taking part, as well as the national fundraising campaign carried out by the Royal Humanitarian Foundation to support those affected by the quake in both countries. The Education Ministry said that in a statement. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs expressed the Kingdom of Bahrain's strong condemnation of the terrorist attack on a bus station in Jerusalem, which resulted in the death and injury of a number of people. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirmed the Kingdom of Bahrain's firm position in rejecting violence and terrorism in all its forms and manifestations, renewing its call for calm, restraint, non-escalation, protection for civilians, and the creation of an appropriate atmosphere to revive the just and comprehensive peace process in the Middle East in order to achieve security, stability, and prosperity for the Palestinian and Israeli people, as well as the people of the region. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil bin Abdurrahman al-Assumi, stressed the necessity of striving towards achieving integration among the Arab countries in order to meet the needs of the Arab people for food and to protect them from any future shocks or disturbances. While chairing meetings of heads of Arab councils and parliaments, which was held today at the Arab League headquarters under the title Arab Food Security, al-Assumi pointed out that a document was prepared under the title Parliamentary Vision for Promoting Arab Food Security in order to ensure that Arab parliamentarians contribute to addressing this problem. Present at the meeting were Secretary General of the League of Arab States, Ahmed Abul Ghaith, and Speaker of the Pan-African Parliament, Chief Charombera, with the participation of 15 Arab Parliament speakers and their representatives. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament called for collective action of the level of the Arab, Islamic and African Parliaments to issue a resolution from the General Assembly of the Inter-Parliamentary Union, which will be held next month in the Kingdom of Bahrain, to demand the establishment of a binding international legal framework to prevent contempt of religion and to hold accountable all those involved in such acts and indecent practices.